right on microphone and answering your phone calls and also setting that fabulous tone by all that great bumper music is the one and only the thespian of great renowned super duper producer Kevin. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, I am the most positive person. You're not going to find anyone more positive consistently than your humble and affable host here. But what happened this week was something that really kind of turned my head. Now, again, understand, for full disclosure, uh, we have 49 Republicans who, again, even though they had massive reservations, they went ahead and voted to move this thing forward on the skinny uh, repeal slash replace of the Affordable Care Act, or AfriCare, because they figured that in committee, at least be able to battle it out and get something going forward. But ladies and gentlemen, lads and lessons, now listen, all the classes, all the schools I attended, replace, repeal, are two separate terms, but to know exactly what that is. It's not modify, it's not codify, it's not acquiesce, it's not sell out, it's repeal and replace. Folks ran on that, and again, I want to make sure that we understand only three uh, to include the former POW, uh, John McCain. I mean, you know, bless his heart, and we hope that he heals. Okay. But you had three Republicans, uh, two Republicans, well, three Republicans, as a matter of fact, who voted no, and so therefore they joined the Democrats to make the final tally 51 to 49, and by that one of those three, had any one of them had actually voted yay, then they would have allowed the vice president, Mike Pence, to go ahead and vote yay to the tiebreaker, as he did before. But that's not what happened. So what are we talking about then? But I want to show you how twisted this scenario is. You know, the president of the United States, President Donald John Trump, my president, your president, the president of the United States of America, is it that he is too clever by design? You may have heard before the first round of votes, he said that uh, it may be better to allow the Affordable Care Act to collapse on its own rather than trying to get involved in it because as long as it is out there, it is still named, gosh, who is that guy that was before Donald John Trump, the guy who may have been born after? But anyway, as long as it's called with that individual's name, it's not Trump care. And he said this multiple times and said it again. So I'm not saying, and I don't want to speak for President Donald John Trump. I mean, he's got enough spokespeople to pay speaking for him to include those who are getting replaced apparently on, for the last three weeks on a weekly basis <laughs> from the actual spokesperson, communications director, uh, chief of staff. Uh, uh, bless their heart. They now all have the opportunity to go do something else. But could it be that ultimately that President Donald John Trump would rather for this thing to collapse on us because you see what's happening. Folks are having their insurance snatched from them after having their old insurance. Remember when this first got started, ladies and gentlemen, when it first became law, is that if you had insurance, that was bogarted by the law. So in other words, you had your own insurance. That was taken away. And one of the commentaries of Flaming Liberal said that, well, because people don't know enough to go out and do what's right for them. So in other words, you're too stupid to pick the right health insurance for yourselves. So you now you have an insurance that, again, I remember the Chief Justice of the United States in the Supreme Court hearing. It was 4-4, and the Chief Justice, John Robert, vote, vote, broke the tie and said that it's okay to use that as a tax. But the Solicitor General of the United States at that time, I'm not going to mention his name, because he was actually helped in the questioning by the Associate Justices Elena Kagan and Sonia Sotomayor to help him with this case, because he was befuddled up there. And the Supreme Court, the uh, the Justice, I mean, the, the head justice there, I mean, it actually said, John Roberts, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, said that you could do that as a tax, which it wasn't even lobbying to be. Oh, my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, we're just getting started. We're going to be right back after this and all sorts of good stuff. And we're going to have your calls and more monologue here on News Talk 640 WFMC. We'll be right back after these messages. Now 
thought the Dave Taylor Show continues. You can reach Dave by calling 864-6400, 1-888-308-0640. And also, star 640, on your cell phone, that's courtesy of Kimmel's WF and Tim. I'm not going to get ready for Kirk, so uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, close it in the bottom half hour and then get right back if we have your, your calls and all sorts of good stuff. We're going to be talking about the transgender ruling, uh, which means that if you're openly transgender, uh, you're going to have to forego uh, your military career, at least for right now. So just fake it until you make it, so to speak. But ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about our changing world rapidly. Again, the staff on the White House is uh, changing almost uh, week by week. Uh, Literally, last week, uh, the uh, former uh, press secretary, uh, uh, he's out. And uh, this week, just Wednesday, Reince Priebus, former chair of the Republican National Committee, uh, he was the actual chief of staff of the White House. That was Wednesday, but uh, today is now Saturday, and so he was out uh, being given das boot and moving forward. But again, ladies and gentlemen, it seems like President Donald John Trump is totally in charge. He has put a uh, four-star general, and notice I didn't say former four-star general. It's one of my little pet peeves. We're going to get into more about that here coming up. But once a four-star general, whatever you are, you are still that, just like there's no such thing as a former high school graduate. That once a high school graduate, always a high school graduate. And if you have a combat tour in the military, there is no expiration date on HUA. That if you HUA then, you're still HUA now. Even if you don't want to go out and do the same things that you did back when you wore a younger man's or younger woman's clothes, or back when you wore, well, your, you know, your transgender clothes, is that you are still that. So don't let anybody feel there's I see these signs all the time about a former SEAL, a former Ranger. My gosh. Once you get the designation, you're always that forever. Now, that's more than a couple of weeks, again, for those of you who uh, you know voted for her. But we're going to go ahead. Do I hear the music there? Is that my imagination? Is that my PTSD in the background? Okay, well, cool then. Uh, Super Duper's on the air talking to some folks. I'm going to get your calls in a minute. But, you know, one thing I want to talk about, though, is that we have to maintain our course. Remember what I said this morning when I started out with the Word of God that uh, nothing shall separate us from the love of God. And we have to everything founded. We have to have a base for everything. And I talked about the foundation here a couple of weeks ago, specifically mentioning that in the in the word to begin the program. And then I talked about again this morning that nothing shall separate us. So since we know that, if we are children of God, then we must be able to move forward and talk and to put forth his word. And that is something that we cannot ever forget. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a whole bunch of noise going on out there. And some folks are talking. I mean, these you, you have some of these downstream media outlets that I never actually heard of. And I didn't listen to them anyway. As a matter of fact, when I was in high school, I would deliver the newspaper when we were at Fort Stewart and between Dad's tours of, no, by that time we had his two tours of non-complete. But even when I delivered newspapers at Fort Stewart, I didn't read that stuff except for the comics and the sports because even then I knew that this was just goofy. But you have multiple avenues to be able to go forward and find out what's going on just like we do now. So keep that in mind and remember what it says in the Holy Bible, going back to the Human Owner's Manual again. In the book of John, chapter 8, verse 32, King James Version reads, And ye shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. So let's go to lines uh, right now. I'll fire it up. And now let's get your input. Robert, you're on the Dave Taylor program, my friend. Thank you for calling. Uh, Robert? I hope you're doing well. Uh, Michael, are you okay? I don't mean to pass out or anything there. You know what? Uh, well, I'm looking forward to meeting Miss Rebecca. Tell, Kevin tells me she's going to be the replacement while he's in Chicago. Well, replacement is not exactly a word to fill in, I would say. Well, fill in. I mean, replacement is a little stronger unless Super Duper told you something that uh, uh, he didn't uh, share with me. I mean, well, we've only been together nine years. I mean, so what? Uh, you know, so why should I be told anything? You know. Uh-huh. And uh, so uh, uh, Bex. He's uh, looking at me now through the glass. He's been sending me notes, uh, you know, trying to upgrade my knowledge of life. And so that uh, she's over there ready to go because two weeks from today, Lord's willing, uh, she's going to be over there where Super Duper Producer Kevin is sitting now. Mm-hmm. And so she's going to be saying things to me that, of course, are uh, uh, upgraded Christian fair. And I'm sure she's not going to put anything out there uh, that uh, you will listen to. But yes, my friend, what's going on? Okay, well, so it's Beck rather than Becky or Rebecca. Well, what would you prefer to go by? Uh-huh. She said Bex. Okay. Like the beer. 
you know. Yeah, well, I'm not familiar with beer. <laughs> well, that... Uh, <laughs> she said that's her rock name. That's uh, a rock name, but it's also a beer, too, Bex. It's okay. Uh-huh. But, oh, she's not smiling, though. So she, uh, clearly, she's a Christian, doesn't drink. But, yeah, so, yeah, Bex is her rock name, and so that's the reason that she's doing that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Bex. She drinks chocolate milk, she said. Chocolate milk? Oh, chocolate milk, huh? All right. Uh, hanging out with the brothers. Okay, no problem. So we're Doug. <laughs> yes, Robert, what's Fred? What's going on this morning? I'm concerned, concerned about you. Oh, well, I appreciate that. I hope everybody's concerned about everybody. We need to love one another. As you, as you just said, you and the physician's assistant have been together nine years. That's right. Okay. With your talent no, no, and ability with the right venue, you should be nationally syndicated by now. Well, the thing about it is, go to Romans and, 8, 28. We know that all things work together for good to them that love God. They did them the call according to his purpose. And one thing that we don't want to do, we don't want to rush or to go out there because, like I said, God has everything under control, get everything squared away, but uh, that's not a problem. Yes, sir. Well, the problem is your agenda. I'm looking at a political cartoon in today's paper. The gentleman is sitting in a chair holding a newspaper. The newspaper says Trump speaks to Boy Scouts. Okay, that's right. He did. He he turns to a little Boy Scout. He says, did you learn anything from the president's speech? The little Boy Scout says no, but he could learn a few things from us. Well, the reality is... a powerful cartoon. Well, and everybody can learn. As a matter of fact, uh, the president, when he spoke to the Boy Scouts, he made the mention that his uh, predecessor never spoke to the Boy Scouts at their convention. So, And the Boy Scouts enthusiastically uh, welcomed him there and loved him. So uh, we can go in multiple. That's a cartoon. But uh, anyway, the Boy Scouts enthusiastically welcomed uh, the president when he spoke uh, there at Cambrai. I saw it. I heard every word, including the profanity and the inappropriate part of the message. But... The appropriate part of the message is what I'm concerned about concerning you. Now, you've already discussed again this morning health care. That's right. There's such a simple solution that you could lead the nation in. Obamacare is not affordable. It was not designed to be affordable. Obamacare was designed by the insurance industry lobby to create a federally subsidized jackpot for them. Seventy percent of Obamacare is subsidized by other taxpayers. But the biggest problem is Obamacare is used to jack up the prices of other policies which should not be affected. The simple public option that was offered when President Obama said, if you like your policy, you can keep it, that was true before the Affordable Care Act was turned into unaffordable Obamacare. That is something that you are more than intelligent enough to see and more than articulate enough to explain to our nation. I don't have the microphone that you have. Well, as a matter of fact, I shared this morning, my friend, and give you full throw, but let me go back to that and just squash that notion. The concept of the Affordable Care Act was never designed to be for Americans. It was designed to be for the insurance company. It was a boondoggle, and it still is a boondoggle of incredible magnitude. And what's happening, though, even with all those support, even with the mandates, even if you have to pay a penalty for not having it, the insurance companies are still getting out of the Affordable Care Act. In North Carolina, that we've already had one go, and uh, the one remaining, Blue Cross Blue Shield, is thinking about going. And you have multiple multiple areas across the country where multiple insurance companies have gotten out of the program. The ultimate goal, and you remember the predecessor to uh, President Donald, Donald Trump had said that you not, we're not going to get single payer in one fell swoop. That that act was just the first part to get people dependent on something, snatch it away from them, and then they would go calling to the federal government to help bail them out. So it was never designed to be for the people, my friend. It was always designed to be a boondoggle. As a matter of fact, by definition, if you t- listen up the way they describe it, they're talking about getting a subsidy. If you have to get a subsidy to even come in close to affording, it's not an Affordable Care Act. And as intelligent as you are, you've got that completely backwards. Okay, the insurance let's see what industry <laughs> is afraid of a public option that it will be a slippery slope into a type of single-payer plan. America did not need anything 
as a whole, what America needed was for the minimum wage worker allowed no more than 28 to 32 hours a week to have affordable insurance with an Affordable Care Act. Obamacare is not what Obama proposed. It's what it was spun into, and you could be the national leader that would change that. But let me give Donald Trump a plus. Donald Trump what? talks about going oh, back right, right to time, other man. administrations and prosecuting people who committed crimes. I right. agree with that 1,000%. For example, Dick Cheney was indicted in Texas. There was an arraignment for Vice President Dick Cheney, former Attorney General Alberto Gonzalez, and other officials accused of involvement in prisoner abuse. Did anything ever come from it? Was Dick Cheney ever charged or prosecuted in any way for the former? 